Hi, it's Jamie, and uh, I wanted to show you all the rage, what's going on in our studio right now downtown. It's a studio I belong to, it's not mine. <laughs> but um, these chunky bowls, and they got this metallic looking um, texture on them, like pressed or pounded metal. So I want to show you how I do these, and um, there are some variations. This is the basic one. And then I also have this where I've taken a texturing tool such as this and used it. And this is kind of a combination of the two, which is kind of fun. So I'll probably end up showing you this one. It's kind of my favorite right now. So to do these bowls, I do these as on a mold. And let me show you the mold. This is part of a mold set uh, that I do, and what I do is I have um, different molds that sit inside each other. And what's nice is that it, it's lighter than a regular mold. And so this is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to eyeball it and center it on this bat. And then I'm going to measure to see how much clay I need. And this comes to about 10 and a half inches, so maybe 11 inches is what I would um, roll as a slab. And for this size um, bowl, I would do a half inch. Um, you could do maybe five eighths as well. Anything thicker is a little bit too thick. Um, and you could probably go three eighths, but I would save three eighths for maybe the smaller molds, not, not this size. A half inch is good for here. So here's my slab, and I'm going to put it on the mold here. Now I'm going to show you my technique for um, putting a slab on a mold and bring it all the way down to the bottom without wrinkles. What helps in this case is that this is a very thick piece of slab, so I'm not going to get the kind of wrinkles I would get if I had went with a thinner slab. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just circling the form and it's like a spiral. I keep going down a little bit further each time. And I learned this technique from Marnie Jamie, and she's a ceramic, uh, architectural ceramic artist that I um, apprenticed with in Santa Cruz for a little bit. We would do this when we made the sinks. So I have a little wrinkle starting here. Um, the way that you would prevent wrinkles when you're doing this is that you would actually lift the piece up as you're going around it. So you lift and you press. I didn't have to do that here because this is such a thick piece. All right, I can feel I'm at the bottom. Now to make sure it's really in there, you do a karate chop. After you do the karate chop, I take my finger and I really push it in all the way around. Now this is where my technique, um, this is my own variation uh, aside from what Marnie did. What I do now is um, when I pressed in here I'm displacing some of the clay and so it's thinner now at the rim than it is um, elsewhere on the piece. So what I want to do is I want to build up the rim to make it thicker but I also want it to stay close to the bat. What I'm going to do here is where I pressed in I left a mark where my finger was. And so I'm going to take my needle tool and I could either go like this and just go back into it and cut or since I can see it I am just going to follow the line of my finger. And now I have a mini bowler hat. So the next step up here is to push the clay back into itself and I'm not, when you push, you're going to push inward and you're not going to push upward. You don't want the clay to come off the bat. So you just go around it and you press in like that. And once I press in all the way around it, I'm going to take my black rib and I'm going to smooth it out. So I have one continuous line. I don't want to look on the side and see that it flares out. I want to make it smooth, a smooth transition. 
So what's, this is going to help me when I take the clay off the mold to have this thicker rim. And also thicker rims help with the stability of the bowl. They're less likely to warp. All right, so uh, watch me in fast motion while I complete the rest of this process. I finished that part. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back and I'm going to spin it and just take a look to see if I really got everything. Little pieces here and there. I'm just going to go back and touch up. The other thing I want to impress upon you is that when you're doing this is to actually come up and do the whole piece when you're done with the rim. Because you really want the clay to hug the mold. I've tried doing other techniques where I put a nylon over the mold um, and then I press into it, you know, with my forms, and it just creates these pockets and divots underneath. So I think for this technique, you really have to have your clay snugly fit on the mold with nothing in between. The next step is um, to put a bottom on this piece. So you could either add, later on, add feet, or in my case, I want to create a flat surface. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm using this hardy backer board and I am just going to press down onto the surface and see how it created that flat space. Now, I want to make sure that that's going to be an equal flat space and it's not. So let's put this back on and I'm going to have this on here and I'm going to press it down to the side that needs it and Okay, <laughs> there it is, boom. So what's going to happen is when I press into this, things are going to shift again, and I'm just I'm going to have to re-level again. That's just the way it goes. But it's good to have my starting point so I know where to go from. The next thing that I'm going to do is um, in, in my mold, um, when I press into them, I am using these little molds that I made for my ladybugs. Um, video and I think I explained on there how I made these so I'm not going to go into it here but um, you can use all these different sizes and for me I'm just gonna you can get away with just using one and I'm just gonna use the middle one so all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna press around all across the mold Now I have finished doing all my pressings with the mold and I'm going to use this tool now. And let's just do a random test here. These are just so fun. So I'm already putting them into the spaces I already made. Now you could just, you know, do it all over the place like I did with my mold. But I like the randomness. I don't want to see a bunch of the circles right next to each other. I think that's good. I think we're good to go. So after all that pressing, I'm going to stick this back on here and sure enough, I've gotten out of whack again. Just a little bit of pressure. There we go. I'm going to do this once more after I take it off the mold too. So as far as setting up goes, um, it really just depends on the temperature. Um, sometimes you would have to wait overnight for this to happen, like in the winter. But it's a nice hot summer day right now and I'm just going to see how long it takes. And when we come back, I'll show you taking it off the mold and finishing out the rim and making any changes to the interior if I happen to have any little pockets or anything like that. All right, see you soon.
Hi, we're back and after a couple hours, or maybe an hour and a half or so, um, this is looking like it's ready to come off. So you can, you can see it by this right here. You can see that the clay is lifted off and you can see like an eighth of an inch between the bat and the bowl. So this is what it looks like underneath. And when you have these nice thick rims, you can um, just start tapping it around here or you can even come to the edge here and I'm just going to go around in a circle until it pops off. You might have to do this like three or four times. So you, another thing to have patience with. The other thing too is when you're doing it like this you will hit the plaster uh, and maybe chip some of it into your clay so you have to be mindful of that and just make sure you remove it. I can feel it starting to lift. You can see right there. So close. There it goes. And there's the inside. That's what it looks like. All right, so it looks pretty good, um, but I do see one thing um, right here. There's a little pocket. It may be right there. And so I'm going to fix that, and I'm going to do that by scoring on the inside where it is and adding some clay. The other thing that's going to have to happen with this piece is that because I went around the rim and I was tapping at it, I'm going to have to smooth this out. So let me show you how I do this part. I'm just going to shove the clay in there. And then I'm going to take a hard rib and smooth it out. It's that simple. The only thing is that uh, because you're adding moist clay to this already set up clay, you're going to have to cover it um, in plastic so the two clays can meld. Um, they're different moisture contents right now. So by covering them plastic, plastic up and bottom, um, you know, beneath it and over the top of it, it'll allow it to all become the same moisture content. Um, so I'm going to just spray inside of it right now and just do a final sweep. And it looks like I still need to add some to that area that I used before. I didn't have enough. I think that's good. Alright, so the other thing is for the surface, I'm going to use the um, serrated um, tool and it has a flat edge to it, so I'm just going to kind of shave it down a little bit. And then finally, because of the way that I was hitting the molds, you know, on, underneath it, you're going to see that some of the um, um, thicknesses look different. Like this is pushed out more because I pushed out the clay here. So what I'm going to do um, to even that up is I'm going to take the wood shaver and I'm just going to shave it down to make it look like the same thickness as the rest of the bowl. Then I think I'm just going to lightly go around the rest of the bowl just to make sure it's all uniform. my fingers to push back in. The thing is if I use a sponge it's taking away clay every time I use a sponge. But when you use a rib or you use your fingers you're compressing and pulling the clay inward or pushing it inward rather than taking away
and I can tell from looking at it right here it looks a little off so before I cover it the other end I'm going to test to see how level it is. I'm going to have to re-put my name in. Now I'm going to cover it for uh, 24 hours and let the two clay temperatures, temperatures, I keep saying that, the two clay moisture contents get to the same part and then I can um, unwrap it and let it dry. So there you have it. Uh, I think you should try it. It's a wonderful experience and have fun. See you next time.